In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Naval Thunder's rules for aircraft. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, aircraft are handled quite a bit different in Naval Thunder than some other Naval Miniatures game, in that everything basically happens off the table, kind of spreadsheet style. But it's uh, still pretty cool, and the effects are actually still fairly historical. So when you're doing a um, aircraft situation, there's a couple different things you're going to have to do. I've got the rules over here on my left, so I kind of keep myself somewhat obvious, or honest, I should say. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look first. So what I have in this particular scenario is, um, this is out on my little desk again. I have an American group, and I also have an air combat tracker for a Japanese group. We'll take a look at that in a second. The first thing you do whenever you're doing this is you've got to add up all the different aircraft you have at your disposal for a given fleet. In this particular case, the carrier that we're simulating here has six of each flavor of ship, minus reconnaissance. So where it says total aircraft available, I'm going to go ahead and write six. This is actually six flights. Six, six, and six. Now over on the Japanese side, go ahead and put this down here as well. Um, they actually have the same amount as well to kind of keep things kind of interesting as far as the CAP goes a little later on. So after you go ahead and total up everything, keep in mind the totals will change as things are different. We then allocate them. So um, you have to assign how many of your fighters are going on escort duty with your attack and how many of them are going to remain as combat air patrol. Uh, for this particular situation, uh, for the Americans, we're actually going to use um, full combat air patrol with no defense for our escorts. And you can kind of, actually, you know, we'll go 50-50 to keep things interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to have three of my uh, flights on escort duty, and I'm going to have three of my flights to go ahead and be on combat air patrol duty over here. Uh, next, we have to allocate uh, how many uh, strike fighters and all those other kind of things that we're going to use. Again, we're not using any strike fighters for strafing purposes. And then we go ahead and uh, could do the same for the Japanese. When you're doing air combat, you have to keep in mind that basically one person attacks and defends, then you flip and you do the other person attacking and defending, keeping in mind that all damage is simultaneous because the attacks are considered to have happened the previous day. So I'll uh, flip it over to the Japanese real quick here. Those little dice are basically to keep me straight. Um, we're going to go ahead and assign um, three of our aircraft flights to escort. And we're going to go ahead and assign three to cap. That keeps everything nice and even. So that actually works really, really well. So um, we've gone ahead and taken care of that. Things along those lines. So now it's time to do the strike faders, fighters, faders, strike fighters part of this engagement. Um, we're going to split the uh, strike fighters, the ones that are not allocated between cap, to strafing or an escorting. In this case, it kept them all as escorting. So it makes it a little bit easier. So now the defender, this is kind of cool. The defender, which in this case we're using the Americans to attack first, gets to decide how they want to allocate their cap dice, either to attack the escorts or to attack the bombers themselves. Keep in mind, if you don't have more defending cap fighters than you have attacking cap fighters, all of the cap fighters have to attack the escort of the incoming attack. So in this case, if you remember, it's three against three. So um, unfortunately, the, there's no access to make it easier to attack. So then what we're going to do is what they call cap versus escort combat. To do this, it's really, really simple. We simply take the defender's cap and we compare that to the um, escort of the actual of incoming attack. To do this, you simply take one dice per aircraft on cap. And then you take one dice per aircraft. We'll go ahead and try to keep it a little bit uh, a little bit more straightforward here, maybe color-wise. And then you're actually going to roll them and then compare them against each other. So I'm going to go ahead and roll for the Americans first. This is for the escort fighters. And then we'll go ahead and roll for the Japanese next. Okay. So the Japanese got two nines and one four. The Americans got a five, three, and a two. So now you begin the actual um, combat phase, so to speak. Put your dice in a position so that the highest number is at the top and the lowest number is at the bottom. And then you're actually going to compare across like this to see who won the fight. In this particular case, this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, the five does not beat a nine, which means one of the escort fighters is lost. Um, we go down to the next one. The nine beats the three. So the second escort fighter is lost. Then the four actually beats the two. So this must have been an early war situation because the Japanese actually destroy all three of the flights of American escort fighters. So uh, that's actually kind of a shame. So we're actually going to make a note there that we've lost three. So a total of survivors in this case is going to be goose egg. Keep in mind these are separate from the fighters that are still protecting our ship way back in the other way. 
After you do that, we go ahead and do Combat Air Patrol versus Bomber Combat. But remember, since we only had three aircraft on Combat Air Patrol, these guys are encumbered and can't actually attack the bombers themselves. Which is, you know, kind of a pain, but that's kind of what happens. It's handy when you have more people on cap. So we're going to go ahead and take these guys out of the fight. So um, we're going to skip that phase because we don't need it this time. Now we do anti-aircraft fire. Anti-aircraft fire is pretty straightforward. You simply add up all the anti-aircraft fire totals of each one of the ships you have, and then you're going to compare that. That basically gives you a big chunk of dice to use against the incoming aircraft. Now the incoming aircraft, there's a couple of these. As a matter of fact, if you remember, there's six dive bombers, six torpedo bombers, and six level bombers. Now that I think about it, though, I don't think lever bombers, with the exception of the Doolittle Raid, would have very much time good luck coming off of a carrier deck. So I'm actually going to go ahead and eliminate those, because that makes no sense at all. Okay, so that gives us a total of 12 aircraft attacking. Now, assuming the Japanese have an anti-aircraft rating of, let's say, 10, just to keep things relatively simple, that gives them a total of 10 dice to shoot at our incoming uh, attackers. So what they can do is allocate them any which way they want. They could say half of them go to the dive bombers, half of them go to torpedo bombers, all of them go to torpedo bombers. It's completely up to them. In this case, they're going to use all 10 of their dice against, let's say, the torpedo bombers. So we're going to go ahead and grab 10 dice. And now what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and roll the allocated number of dice. Keep in mind, we only get one round of this, so this is as many dice as we're going to get. So we're going to go ahead and attack them. So let's see, the target number for a torpedo bomber is a 9+. plus. So each 9+, plus in this roll, is going to eliminate a single flight of torpedo bombers. So let's see how that did. Uh, da -da, let's see. Okay. So it looks like two of the torpedo bombers were eliminated by anti-aircraft fire. We'll see if the uh, Japanese do any better coming in. So that means, if we go ahead and take a look at um, anti-aircraft losses, under dive bomber, we've gone ahead and lost two. But at least we didn't lose any to the incoming this. So that means total strike force remaining is four dive bombers, six torpedo bombers, and no escort or strike fighters left. Again, we eliminated level bombers. So now the torpedo bombers and the dive bombers get to get their day in the sun. So in this particular case, let's go ahead and take a look at the score. So choose a surface target. We'll assume they're attacking a carrier, make it pretty simple. Uh, you add one to the target's base number. So in this particular case, doing math real quickly, it's going to be an eight or greater. And then we're going to roll the attack dice allocated to each target against the adjusted target number for the ship. Uh, taking a quick look to confirm that you can't attack more than one a target. I want to make sure I get that section right because that would be kind of silly. Uses a resolve each attack, da, 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 resolve it. I'm going to make sure that we don't mess that up. Uh, no, we're in good shape. So we're going to dump all of our attackers into the uh, aircraft carrier, which again is an 8 up. So we're going to go ahead and we have four remaining dive bombers. So we're going to take four dice. It's going to be 8, normally it would be a 7, but you have to add one because it's a dive bomber attack. So we're going to go ahead and uh, roll this and see what happens. We have an 8, a 6, a 10, and a 7. So if you remember, it's an 8 up, so that means two of the dive bomber attacks actually did get through and hit that carrier. Quickly sitting here, rolling this one more time. Uh, we now have to roll for penetration against the secondary armor value of the carrier. So the secondary armor value in this carrier is 3, so it looks like this one penetrates and this one also penetrates, which means you do the full damage. The full damage in this particular case are 10 points of damage for 20 points total. We then go ahead and roll in the critical table. Uh, that's going to be a 9 secondary. Let's see if we get a fire or something like that. That is going to be a 13. That's also going to be that as well. And we go ahead and do that damage. Any carrier that receives a single hit automatically loses one flight operation. If it runs out of flight operations, then it can no longer launch or recover aircraft. So the dive bombers managed to, to inflict a, a whopping 20 points of damage to this target carrier and reduced its total ability to launch and recover by two. This doesn't take effect until the Japanese have had their chance, by the way. So now we're going to do the torpedo bombers. The torpedo bombers, <laughs> we've got a few of these. We have six of them remaining from our attack, if you remember. So we get six dice. So again, we're going to compare it against the target number. It's going to be an eight. We treat it as a short-range torpedo attack. Uh, let's see here. Just double-checking. Add one. We took care of that already. And we're good to go. So we need an eight or higher. 
looks like our torpedo bombers managed to get a single hit. Oh, sorry, get two hits, which isn't too, too bad if you think about it. So now we treat this as if getting hit by a torpedo. Now we'd have to go ahead and measure penetration. We're using secondary armor value again. So this one is a 10 and this one is a nine. The secondary armor value on that particular carrier is a three. So both of these penetrate. So we treat them as two torpedo hits. In this particular case, it's 18 damage per hit. But since they penetrated, they both cause a critical. So our first critical would have been a 13. The second critical would have been a 15. So that's kind of how that played out. At this point, the Americans are gonna return back to base. So you always wanna make yourself a note of how many actually got back after that engagement. So in this case, we have four dive bombers left. I'm sorry, do we have four? Yeah, we have four. Oh, we should roll two more dice, oh well. Six of those, but um, we only have three. So now what happens is we switch sides and let the Japanese take a crack at it. Go ahead, pull this out of the way. Pull this down here just like this. Okay, so now the Japanese are going to be attacking with their group. Keep in mind that um, any losses to their starting cap haven't changed because not only did they not lose anybody, but damage takes effect at the end of this phase. So let's go ahead and take a look what happens this time. We're gonna do all escort. Again, we're gonna eliminate the level bombers. That makes no sense. So uh, first thing we need to do is see what happens when the cap gets in a fight with the escort. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect a few dice here. We'll have one group, we'll use this group to represent the Americans, and we'll use this group to represent the Japanese. Same technique. J Americans are attacking with three cap fighters, the Japanese are, uh, you have three escort fighters. So now we go ahead and take them and organize them by number. And this is a little bit different of an engagement. So in this case, the Americans um, do not defeat that particular group of Japanese, Jap what did I say? Japanese. So because a nine versus seven, the seven is smaller, which means that the Americans lose one of their defending fighters. Going to the next one, same thing happens again. Going to the next one, same thing happens again. So in this case, the Japanese escort fighters were able to destroy every American cap flight. So I'm gonna go reach over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick little note that we are down to zero as far as our cap fighters go. So not only did we lose our, all of our escort fighters, we also lost all of our cap fighters. So that's gonna hurt us later on. So uh, that we move on now to the next phase, and this is gonna be the anti-aircraft phase. Now the Americans have a lot of anti-aircraft. They have an anti-aircraft rating of 20. So unfortunately for us, um, none of these aircraft got lost to cap, but we might get some for anti-aircraft. So there's two different groups of 12. The total American, just quickly adding up off the top of my head, is 20 dice against the uh, total of uh, 12 here. So let's find out what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my D10s, and you can allocate your AA any way you want. In this case, I'm gonna do 10 into the dive bombers and 10 into the torpedo bombers. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take all this like this. The targeting for this, I'm just gonna double check really, really quickly. Make sure I'm not missing anything silly. Yep, we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and roll them in uh, big, big groups here. So this is gonna be the Americans attempting to attack the torpedo bombers. Remember, they get 10 dice because they have um, such a huge anti aircraft rating of 20. So, to get a dive uh, a torpedo bomber, uh, which one? A dive bomber, we need to be getting a 10 or bigger. So, we have one hit, and that's it. So, um, unfortunately, in this case, losses to anti aircraft, they lost a single dive bomber. Now, we're going to roll the other 10 out of our 20 against the torpedo bombers. Torpedo bombers are a 9 or higher. So, we have this one. It is not a good day to be a person on these ships. So one torpedo bomber is destroyed by anti-aircraft, which leaves five of each, which is gonna be pretty messy. Okay, so now the attackers get their chance to actually attack the individual ships. And again, I'm leaving the cards out to keep this fairly simple. Uh, taking a look down here, we're gonna start with the dive bombers. Um, let's say they're attacking the American carrier, which is normally gonna be a seven, but it goes up to an eight because the American carrier would be diving. So then we're gonna go ahead and roll one dice per remaining dive bomber, in which case it's gonna be five dice. Grab my five dice. So we need an eight or higher. Wow. So that's three total hits. So now we need to roll for penetration. Uh, it's a three up for the save. 
So one of them actually doesn't penetrate, which means it does half damage, which in our particular case, it's five damage. It also reduces the anti-aircraft rating by one. These two, however, actually penetrate. So then what we normally do is you go for criticals. One of our criticals was an 11. The other critical was an 11 as well. And uh, we'd apply all that damage to the American vessel. So now we're gonna go ahead and use our torpedo bombers. And um, we're gonna be mean, we're gonna keep attacking our imaginary carrier. So we're gonna go ahead and grab five dice. And again, to hit him is going to be, let's take a look real quickly here. It's going to be an eight or higher. So it looks like this time they were pretty successful. So one, two, three individual hits. So we need to check for penetration on the torpedoes. Secondary armor values we're rolling against here. It looks like this guy did not penetrate, but he still does a good amount of damage. In this case, he does nine points of damage. These two guys do their full 19 point, uh, say 18 points of damage, and they both cause a critical. One of the criticals was this 12. The other critical would have been, uh, in this particular case, a uh, three, that would also be a 12. So that's what happens. Now these guys, of course, will come back and uh, return to base. Since they still have a carrier to land at, by the way, damage just got applied to everybody. Um, they did take a little bit of damage to the carrier, but not enough that they've lost their ability to recover fighters. So we can come back here and we just make a quick little note. Now here's where it gets interesting. You start back from the top again. You're gonna do this twice. So now, let's see what we have left. The Americans are completely out of fighters, which is not a good thing. But we still have a pretty good amount of anti-aircraft. So let's see, total aircraft available. At this particular point, fighters, zero. Dive bombers, we only have four. Torpedo bombers, we still have six. So starting cap, of course, in this case, is gonna be zero. Uh, coming down here, strike fighter application, none of those, none of those. And now we'd go ahead and do it again. The Japanese, knowing that they were very successful at shooting down all of our fighters, would probably at this point decide to um, go ahead and uh, not even bother escorting their level bombers, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers, because there's nothing to shoot them down other than AAA. So that's going to be fairly messy as far as the Americans attack. So then we do the whole process again. Now here's where it gets interesting. In a normal game, if we want to go ahead and use these during our normal naval battle, like in the middle of a fight, what you do at the beginning of the game is you take a 10-sided dice and roll it, and this would indicate what turn that the um, you'd have a free fighter phase at the beginning of the movement phase of a particular round. So this would be interesting. You'd go ahead and do the whole thing all over again, even after all the damage that's taken place in that game. So um, that's pretty much all there is to fighter combat. It's pretty straightforward. I kind of like that everything is kind of done off the table. You can get this all done before your battle even starts. Uh, one thing you can do, by the way, is if you're attacking during the game, the anti-aircraft fire, it gets broken down because everybody's so much more spread out. But the rules in the book actually describe that. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Again, this is a Naval Thunder Battleship Row, and that's generally how you handle aircraft.